Verdict. I'm your host, David Lesh. We are always encouraging you to stay connected. Tweet me at David Lesh. A few days ago, we recorded via Zoom a conversation concerning legislation that would adjust the minimum wage annually. This would automatically respond to the cost of living, and this would give workers the wage increases they need, rather than needing a new fight for each raise. Let's watch. All right, welcome back to today's verdict. I'm your host and trial attorney, David Lesh. We have two guests with us today, one by video, the other by uh, just phone. Maritza Silva uh, Farrell, uh, the executive director at Align, is here, as well as a worker from Chipotle, uh, Alyssa Roman. Ladies, thanks for being here. Thank you for Thank having you me for here. Having it's a pleasure. All right, let's start with you, Maritza. Uh, we're talking about minimum wage uh, and, you know, how the struggles that you know, certainly low-income work, uh, workers find in our city to be able to really survive given inflation. Just, just it's a very diff difficult time for them. Could you maybe give us a little bit of a history of the minimum wage in New York and why it's so important that you think we should be making sure we have uh, periodic raises in minimum wage? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I can give you a little history in terms of how we actually um, were able to increase the minimum wage uh, 10 years ago to a historical number, which was 15. Um, this uh, happened about 10 years ago, a decade ago. Fast food workers in New York led the way when they walk out of their jobs demanding $15 minimum wage and a union. Um, from their employers. Um, that specific campaign it was spread nationwide and became the movement known as what we already know right now, the 5 for 15. Um, I mean, we're pr really proud from the progress that was made back then, um, and we are going to keep on going. So uh, actually, I want to share that uh, this fight was led by all workers in the fast food industry back then, and it continues to be led by workers who are in the most vulnerable sectors of our economy. And we need to recognize that minimum wage increases. What they do is allows for workers to be able to have sustainable lives. Um, that's the reason why this week we are coming back and we launched a campaign called Raise Up New York with a coalition of workers, labor unions, community groups, and responsible business um, who, that are committed to continue to ensuring that workers earn wages um, and they can, they can have a, a life that they can thrive in. You know, I see, you know, this, you know, the bill was, you know, came up through uh, Senator Jessica Ramos, Assemblywoman Latoya J, uh, Joyner, and it really, it calls for annual minimum wage increases. How do you, how do you figure out the amount? I mean, what are you looking at? Are you looking at, um, you know, year over year inflation? How do you figure out the percentage that minimum wage should be raised up every single year? How would you do that? All right, let's let's just go to back to the basics, right? Like wages. Sure. Let's just understand that right now are too low, particularly in the most low wage industries of our economy. And let's just point out that the industries that we're talking about are the industries uh, from the workforce that sustain our economy through a pandemic. The same essential workers that we applaud for during the pandemic and we were like thankful to uh, are the same exact workers that are getting paid low wages today. Um, so I think just to start off with the point that, you know, workers don't have enough make uh, make enough to be, make ends meet. Um, right now, we are recognizing that there is a high cost of living. Rents are skyrocketing. If you go to the grocery store, you see two, three, three times more of what you were paying a year or two ago in groceries. Um, so overall, the cost of living in New York is increased. Um, and it's increasingly, and, and the, the the, the issue is that it's no is no pairing with the wages on how much we're paying workers. In New York City, the minimum wage hasn't budged since 2018. So there has not been increases on the wages despite the cost of living increase. So that's how you manage the numbers. As a result, its value, its value has already plummeted from more than 15% in value. 
and will fall by uh, more than 30% by 2026, unless we have a legislation like the one that we're going to talk about today that you know allows for increases to happen accordingly to the cost of living as we see it happening. L let's talk, let's hear from Alyssa for a second. Alyssa, Alyssa, you're at Chipotle, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. And are you a, a full-time or a part-time employee? Part-time. And uh, are you finding it difficult to, to make ends meet for you? Um, honestly, it's very difficult. So when I first started working at Chipotle, I was living with my mother. Um, I'm a, I was a full-time student at the, t at the moment. Um, my mom is a single mother, so I try to help her make ends meet as much as possible, especially that she's not working herself. So it makes things really difficult. And now I'm expecting my first child next month. So, and now I'm living in the shelter. So it's very, very difficult. Do the other employees at Chipotle get together and talk about, you know, the hope that minimum raise, minimum wage is raised up, that they could use it? Are these discussions that you hear when you're um, in the restaurant? Sometimes, sometimes people just act like, they just tolerate it, you know? They just kind of also make ends meet for their families or their own personal needs. So it's like, you know, you just, you have no choice but to just suck it up sometimes. What's your biggest expense? Is, is it, is it the food? Um, is it, is it your, is it rent? Where, where is most of your money going usually that you find that you need, that you need an increase in, in your, in your hour, hourly rate? Where, where would it go to? I mean, before I was pregnant, it was like more just helping my mom pay her bills and then like travel expenses because like a metro card alone is like 123 monthly, you know, just to travel back and forth to work and get back home safely. And now um, it's my daughter, you know, I have my daughter coming next month. So I have to like get everything ready for her, diapers, wipes, clothes, cribs, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the normal basic needs for a child. Maritz, let's get back to you for a second. Um, you, you heard from Alyssa. Are these the type of complaints that have become um, worrisome to you in terms of young, you know, young women or, or you know, who are pregnant or having a baby now, uh, and they just need, you know, the help financially? I mean, that's right. Like, and 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 again, I mean, I want to emphasize that we're talking about workers who are essential workers and have always been essential workers. They are actually sustaining our economy. Um, and, and, and this is the reason why we believe it is time for an increase on the wages. $15 is not enough any longer. Um, $15 does not allow for basic needs as uh, we're hearing for, from the Chipotle worker. Um, and it, you know, at this moment, we need to ensure that folks have a place to live. The cost of living in New York City is just way too high. Rent is way too high. Um, so that's the reason why we are asking for an increase of $20 and more. Um, the way we are setting this up just to address this problem at the moment is just to make it so that the state legislature pass a legislation um, that will increase to 2025 by 2026. And that way, the cost of living and the cost of the wages can increase uh, in some level to be able to allow for folks in this important sector of our economy to be able to have uh, the ability to make ends meet. Well, you know, it's a very important issue. We'd certainly like you to come back uh, on and let us know how it's faring and whether you think you'll have that increase or when you'll have it. Um, but we want to thank you very much, both of you ladies, for coming on the show and giving us some very uh, important insight about the minimum wage. Thank you, David. One thing that I wanted to also point out before we cut out um, that I think might be helpful for folks to know that when we're saying we're wanting to increase the minimum wage for workers, there's not just one small section of the workforce. We're talking about over 2 billion workers across. So, many. so that's another piece to, to make sure that we emphasize. And with this particular legislation, once it gets passed, we're talking about $2,000 annual raise increases for those workers. Again, we want to thank you very much for coming on. All right, stay with us. Today's verdict, there's so much more. Right thank after. you so much, David. All right, well, that's all the time we have today. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us, and of course, you, the viewers, for watching. If you missed any part of today's show, be sure to check it out at bronxnet.tv. Also remember, if there is a legal issue or topic you'd like to see on a future edition of today's verdict, 
Feel free to contact me at davidlesh at bronxit.org or tweet me at David Lesh and make sure to hashtag Ask Today's Verdict. For myself and all of us at Today's Verdict, always remember, know your rights, know your issues, reach a verdict. See you in two weeks. <laughs>